Hello. Today I'd like to say a few words about my Skywatcher AZ GTI go-to mount. It was the first go-to mount I purchased. Uh, I needed one because I'm in a Bortle 6 area, 12 blocks from a large oil refinery, and on a good night I can see maybe six stars. And it's real hard to star hop when you got 30 degrees between each star. So I thought I need a go-to mount. Looked around, researched a little bit. I actually bought a uh, Celestron 90 millimeter uh, SLT, which I gave to a friend because uh, I didn't like the Celestron operating system on its go-to. Let's find three bright objects and, and uh, uh, point the scope at it. I couldn't bend down enough with a bad back to look through the finder scope to find three bright objects. Uh, this thing operates off sin scan. I just tell it, I want to go to so and so star, because I and it'll 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 try to find it. Anyway, uh, I have a hand controller. I paid an extra 155 for around here somewhere. Never use it because the phone app's much more powerful. It's free. Uh, I use downloads sin scan pro. And uh, you can sit in the house and control the telescope outside instead of having to stand next to it and use a hand controller. In any event, uh, I like it. Let me show it to you. Here it is. It comes with a uh, tripod, uh, eyepiece tray, and this thing is a tower. Uh, and I have that on there, so in case you have a long tube, I'll show you. I've got a long tube right here. If you put a, put a, put a telescope with a long tube in it, this telescope won't hit the leg of the uh, tripod because this tower raises it extra high. Uh, the optimum tube. I used when I first got this was a short tube 80. And if you look at some of my early um, shorts, you'll see a lot of them were taken with a Celestron short tube 80. That's what I had before I started buying a bunch of other telescopes. Here it is, in fact. Stick this in here. Eight pound mount. One half pound telescope. I, I carry the thing in one hand. Instead of spending 45 minutes like I do with my TG4 motorized mount to go out and uh, level it and polar line it and get and uh, balance it, which takes about 45 minutes, I can set this thing down on the ground, face generally the north, make the optical tube kind of level and go to work. That helps when you're trying to, if you're trying to take pictures or view something, you know, you got 20 or 30 minutes. Because I might have a, uh, a cloud bank going overhead. And when I look up here where I live, I can see the bottom of the clouds are bright white. And there's a clear spot. But over there, Maybe 20 minutes away is another cloud bank moving in. I can put this up and take a couple photographs or do some viewing for 20 or 30, 20 minutes or so. I only have this thing half set up. So it's a great, oh, I know you also, since it's so light, easy to use, it's a great grab and go mount. <clears throat> it's a light mount, so it can handle 11 pounds. <coughs> I mean 11 real pounds. I've used it with uh, this optical tube, uh, Orion 130 millimeter uh, Newtonian, uh, and this Astromaster 70, uh, the Celestron 130. In fact, about the only telescope I have I can't use it with 
is my 150 millimeter determining. I've even used it with uh, I, with my C6 with Hyperstar and 11 inch dew shield. It can handle anything up to 11 pounds. I, I paid 399 for it. When I checked this morning, it was selling for 451 on Amazon. I guess that tells you something about tariffs. Um, now that I have three, I have three, two. I have two go-to mounts that are equatorial. I like to take pictures for a long time. This starts giving field rotation after about 10 or 15 minutes, if you're photographing. Just once you look at something here, you can look at it all night, and you don't get field rotation because you're not storing temporary pictures in your mind trying to add them together. Uh, but if you're using it for photography, you will, it'll start eating the photo. After about two, two and a half hours, you've eaten a quarter of your photo with field rotation. But as I said, if you're using it for observation, you don't get field rotation. Uh, it's quick, it's easy to use. Uh, most of the things I've reviewed and recommended cost $300 or less, beginner kinds of stuff. So this is a little steep for beginner. I did consider buying a um, 114, Celestron 114 millimeter LCM. They're only 438 with the telescope and the mount and tripod. And you can currently get them on sale for like 338. The mount has a five pound weight limit. The, the optical tube you're putting on it is exactly five pounds. So if you put an eyepiece in it, you're overweight. They're awful rickety. Uh, they're awful light and awful rickety and very inexpensive. And they use the Celestron operating system that I do not like. So I chose not to buy that because I knew if I did, I'd have to give it a bad review because I hate the Celestron operating system for its go-to stuff. Um, but at 451, if you can swing it, and if you think you need a go-to mount because you don't know the sky, oh, they, I heard people say, learn the sky, then get a go-to mount. No, I got the go-to mount, and I learned the sky from watching to see where the telescope was pointing. Uh, yeah, because most of the stuff I want to look at, you can't see with your eye or with a, a finder scope or binoculars. you got to have a dedicated telescope because they're far away and faint. And I know where they are because uh, I point because my go-to mount told me where they were, and I can follow them across the sky. So yeah, you can learn the sky with a go-to mount. Anything bad about this? Well, field rotation. Oh, there's a little knob here. When you twist this, it locks it down so that it can't move. Mine broke. The knob quit working. I called Skywatcher. They said, is it, you had it less than two years? Yeah. Show us proof. And I showed them my receipt online. They said, well, send it to us. We'll pay postage both ways and fix it. And they did. So if you buy it from somewhere uh, new, like Amazon, the guarantee is good. Skywatcher's good. I've called them half a dozen times a different issue. They make a wedge you can stick in here uh, for $99 and another $35 for one of these things. Uh, a bar to put your counterweight on, and you can convert this into a sort of a equatorial mount. I called them and asked them about it. They said, well, we don't really support that. Uh, so you, he told me where to download the software to convert it. They said, well, we don't support that. Just some guy came up with it. It's not something that we support, so I didn't buy it because they don't support it. And he was good enough to tell me that. Uh, what do I not like about it? Okay. The legs are kind of wonky plastic. 
one of the reasons it's the light. Uh, the tower is a little bit wonky because it's they were trying to go for lightness. Um, I'm going to review the Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. It has the same mount, same tower, but it has a it's an equatorial mount, a dedicated equatorial mount. It's a lot easier to find stuff with that because with this, uh, if it says go to the left and go up. You can't go to the left and go up. You gotta well, you have to go at an angle, and the angle switches. You'll find out if you buy it, um, and you'll quickly get used to it. Uh, I like it. I still now now that I have those, the only thing I use is for when I do still use it is if I have a brief period. Matlock's coming on. I got 20 minutes. I can grab this, go out there, and take a picture. And come back in and watch Matt and I. Um, and I also use it in the house. I'll set this in the kitchen and I'll turn my artificial star on here in the uh, living room or in the front room. And I'll put an SCT or a, a Newtonian on this mount out there. Turn it on, get my phone, <clears throat> zoom in on the uh, artificial star to collimate it. And with an SCT, you have to recenter it every time you turn one of the little collimation screws. Because every time you move the secondary mirror, it just goes out balance. So I use this a lot for uh, collimating and keeping my two SCTs uh, collimated. And uh, checking the airy disk on the, when I do collimations on my Newtonian, I'll check the airy disk to see if they look good. Yeah. So if you, if you need a, a if you're a beginner, you want about the least expensive one you can get that's still good. This is a good go-to mount. Or if you just need a light, quick go-to mount. Grab this, throw it in the car. It doesn't even matter if it bounces around the trunk because it doesn't need collimating. Um, you can go out there and take something like this and uh, go up in the mountains. And you can hike up there if you disassemble it and put it in the pack. Uh, it's, it's a light mount. Uh, a medium mount like this one, this weighs eight, about eight and a half pounds. This weighs 23 pounds plus the counter weight. So it's not quite such a grab and go. This is a good grab and go go to now. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, like and subscribe. I'm desperate short of subscribers. I'm still under my intermediate goal of 13 billion. So please help out and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and help me out a whole lot. And uh, encourage me to buy more telescopes that I can't afford. And that's all I have to say about this. So, till we see each other again, happy trading.